This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 218. How to lose 15 pounds of fat without skimping on the carbs, part one, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Wednesday. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. I realized I'm totally spacing this week. It's already midweek and I haven't shared with you an inspirational quote yet. So here we go. Life isn't about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. George Bernard Shaw. I think that quote is perfect for today's topic. Now, today's post is a pretty new one from J.C. Dean, and like earlier this week, it's on the longer side, so I'm breaking it up into two episodes. But before we get to it, we're already halfway through the month, and that means another book giveaway to a random person on our mailing list is happening soon. To be in all of those raffles, just make sure you're on our email list at oldpodcast.com. It's as simple as that. I'll give you a quick reminder at the end of the show. So for now, let's jump right in, hear part one of today's post, and start optimizing your life. How to Lose 15 Pounds of Fat Without Skimping on the Carbs, part one, by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. Fat loss successes and body transformations all have a story behind them. For some, it seems to happen fairly linearly, while for others, it doesn't. Some people will scream at you, fat loss is easy, insinuating that if you're failing with your own fat loss efforts, that you're broken, which is highly unlikely, or doing it all wrong, this is definitely possible, or just unlucky, but most likely inconsistent. Creating and maintaining a caloric deficit is a fairly simple process, but most all of the following issues tend to crop up. One, maintaining strength and muscle. Two, combating metabolic slowdown. Three, balancing macro counting and a social life, as well as your psyche. And four, managing your personal expectations. In this post, we'll tackle each of the above, one by one, by outlining a client's progress over the last year. You cut calories to lose fat, not muscle. For many people, going on a diet can be disastrous, mostly from a standpoint of muscle loss, energy, and mood swings, periods of yo-yoing back and forth, losing and gaining the same 10 pounds over and over again. If you ask the internet, many will tell you diets don't work, but that should be said with better context in mind. It should be stated as diets don't work. If you follow most of the fad diets popular on the internet, then you're doomed to fail. One day, carbs are the devil and responsible for keeping you fat, so you're expected to cut out all fruit and starch and survive on nothing but leafy greens and lard. The next day, it's because of all the supposed toxins in your gut, so you better go on the five-day cayenne, lemon juice, and water cleanse to kickstart your fat loss. And the next week, a study comes out that paleo man lived to be 200, and therefore you should run around scavenging for raw meat and berries in your loincloth. Totally kidding here, stay with me. The truth is, most everyone wants a shortcut. That's why some of these diets are so popular and cleanses have been used in diet marketing for decades. So with my client, Salim, we had a specific plan. Eat enough to support his training, but also provide enough of a caloric deficit to produce slow and steady fat loss. As far as his training, everything was centered around heavy compound lifts with a good bit of metabolic training thrown in the mix. So a typical day for him went as follows. One, strength movement one heavy drop set training. Two, strength movement two, moderately heavy drop set training. Three, metabolic superset with opposing movements. For example, dumbbell bench and then seated rows. Four, metabolic superset with differing movement planes. For example, lat pull downs and Arnold presses. And five, abs and shoulder health work. Training in this manner serves two primary purposes. The heavy loads send the maintenance signal to his muscles and nervous system. If you don't push yourself in the gym, muscle loss can occur while dieting. The metabolic work, a la supersets, burned some extra glycogen and provided some stimulus for muscle growth. In addition to the training, we had to meet everything in the middle with a solid diet strategy. Don't dig yourself into a metabolic wasteland. Dieting can be tough. You have a goal of attaining a certain look, having abs, veins popping out in places you wouldn't imagine, and being beach ready. However, if you diet too hard for too long, you'll get run down. Training performance suffers, and you typically get some of the symptoms that come along with dieting, 
such as a crash in your libido, hypometabolic symptoms, like a strong intolerance to cold, having some dry skin, experiencing a lower body temperature, etc., and a general lack of energy when compared to normal. To combat this, many will rely on stimulants for a boost in energy, whether it be coffee, caffeine pills, ephedrine, nicotine, or even stronger substances. Others turn to increasing stress hormones via long periods of fasting, sometimes upwards of 24 hours to improve fat loss and catecholamine release. These are stress hormones that tend to supply a false sense of energy and alertness. But the issue with this approach is just how far do you take it? Well, we took a more sane approach. Not to say Salim didn't enjoy coffee or sometimes skip breakfast, but we didn't go to extreme measures to reduce hunger pangs. So here's exactly what we did. Have your cake and eat it too. Macro tracking balance. For the diet, we took an approach that is fairly well known in the bodybuilding community, but not so much with lay exercise enthusiasts. For many of my clients, but not all, I tend to cycle calories throughout the week and give a pretty hefty refeed on Sundays, a full day off diet and training. I first learned about this approach through Amir Siddiqui, and then after reading more of Scott Abel's work, particularly his book, The Cycle Diet. So while I cannot take credit for the creation of such a protocol, I use it because it's effective and offers a good deal of stress relief that dieting and training can create over time. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled, How to Lose 15 Pounds of Fat Without Skimping on the Carbs by J.C. Dean of jcdfitness.com. So far, I love J.C. Dean's approach here. He's striving for balance. He doesn't want people to become obsessed with food. He doesn't want people to suffer through fasting necessarily unless it works for them. He wants to hopefully meet his clients where they are and find something that suits their lifestyle so that they can reach their goals. And for you longtime listeners of this show, you know that's really what it's all about. But we'll see what he has to say about meal planning, specifically with regards to carbohydrates, tomorrow. Now, once again, before you know it, it'll be time for another book giveaway. We give away at least one book to a random person on the first of every month. To be in those raffles, make sure you subscribe to our weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. You'll get some free spreadsheet tools from us right away, then a weekly email with updates, and you'll be in our raffles automatically. Again, that's all at oldpodcast.com. Thank you as always for listening. I'll see you in about 24 hours where we'll continue this post and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.